Good afternoon. Uh, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. Another back to basics video that's going to cover specifics on virtual domains. So I get asked a lot because most people that are new to um, to Fortigates they they see the the VDOM mode whenever they're in the GUI and the first thing they ask is you know what is this? Uh, first things first, Fortinet does have some documentation that goes into detail about you know why VDOMs are awesome and how to use them and the advantages of them and such. Um, most of which will be carried and covered in this in this video here. So, um, you know what are VDOMs, right? So virtual domains um, or VDOMs, basically what they do is they give you the ability to take a single physical device and to slice it up into multiple virtual devices. Um, I think you can go up to 250 or so virtual FortiGates as long as your license supports it. Um, and the advantages of this is each VDOM is able to do completely independent routing, security profiles, firewalling, etc. So a situation where this is very very useful, right, let's say you're a data center provider. Um, you provide hosted services to clients. Client A is on the 192.168.1.0 slash 24. You know, they, they use the most common address space. And then you have a new client that's onboarding that also happens to use that space. Obviously, you know, if you keep that all internal, you have to do some crazy routing, crazy natting, things that just really convolute the process and make it very very complicated and then you also have situations where those people want to actually do the administration of their firewall anyways so what you can do is you can take your single FortiGate and you can break it up into VDOM A and VDOM B they're completely independent of one another so you can have the same subnets on each one 192.168.1 192.168.1 1 by the way, it feels awesome to actually be able to move my arm. Uh, shoulder healing is going well. But um, that gives you the ability to, one, you can give them administrative access to just their VDOM so they can create policies as they want. They can tweak things. It takes a lot of the administration effort off you outside of initial configuration, right? It enables you to offer more robust services to them, etc. So, and a cool thing about it is is depending on your environment, you know, let's say you're putting a FortiGate into an environment that already exists, obviously porting over from an ASA or a sonic wall or God forbid one of those Meraki's, um, you know, you have to port the policies over. So you could divide your, your FortiGate, especially if your existing device has expired services. Um, you can divide your FortiGate up into two you have your NAT one, which is where all your final destination stuff is going to go, right? As you port the policy over, that's where you migrate your services to. But you could have another one that's in transparent mode. And you can put that in front of your existing ASA or Meraki or whatever you have in place um, transparently so that it can at least provide protective services while you provide the port. It takes a lot of the stress out of, oh my god, i got to get off this device right now because it doesn't have support and things like that. It well, it takes the stress off of the software side of things. Obviously, if the device fails, you're up the creek without a paddle, right? Um, so that's that's the main thing. Um, very very common. <clears throat> I have a lot of clients that have FortiGates with several VDOMs on them, specifically for their clients, and then I provide tier three support for them. So it gives you that option. Another cool thing about it. <laughs> is you know if you're if you're a data center place you no doubt end up running into a situation where um, not only do you get charged by the rack and by the internet connectivity but you also get charged for power consumption so if you have 30 clients instead of having 30 to 60 because you know high availability right instead of having 30 to 60 different um, firewalls in there all consuming power you have your HA cluster that does everything for you and then it's just carved out for them. Very, very nice. Very green. Um, 
which is, is nice because it affects your bottom line directly, right? Um, it also gives you, uh, VDOMs give you the ability for like virtual clustering. Um, and virtual clustering is just an extension of FortiGate high availability. So um, basically if you have two FortiGate units and multiple VDOMs, uh, virtual clustering will give you like failover protection for multiple VDOMs. Uh, you can load balance between them, all that jazz. And of course you can actually assign resource allocation accordingly. So if VDOM A needs more resources, throw more that way. Um, the only thing that's a little tricky is licensing, and even that's very simple. Uh, most FortiGates out of the gate, most, for, most FortiGates out of the box is probably a better one for this. Um, they support 10 VDOMs just with the built-in licensing right. Um, you can buy an extended VDOM license that gives you up to 250 depending on the model. Um, licenses there are flexible. They can be purchased for a different number of VDOMs. You don't have to go straight from 10 to 250 and things like that. So um, that's the main gist of it. Um, if you go to Fortinet's document site, they'll actually give you a couple of different deployment scenarios. Um, it's docs.fortinet.com, and then if you search for inside 40OS VDOM or whatever, it should give you the thing that you're looking for because they have a document in there called inside 40OS VDOMs. And um, some of those uh, scenarios that they have is like how to, if you're a managed security service provider, you would section yourself into VDOMs for your clients, like I mentioned previously. If you're doing a branch deployment, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, and the, the data center deployment is actually specifically covered in there. So, uh, pretty straight and forward. Um, maximize utilization of your FortiGate. Provide your clients access to the FortiGate without having access to your stuff. Um, kind of basically delegating the, the tier one stuff to them. And uh, it helps get rid of you know, some of those nasty NAT and route issues that you run into if you try to run everybody through the same firewall because subnet overlap is going to happen. It's just, it's just going to happen. So, And the only way to really prevent that is just to bite the bullet and do VDOMs to keep everything easy breezy. Just more straightforward. Um, but yeah. If you have any questions, uh, post in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. Um, otherwise, you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I look forward to the next video. Thank you.